Amen. And I don't know about you, but there's been a lot going on in my life. How many would say amen? amen. The enemy's busy, but the enemy's defeated. Amen. amen. So we're gonna we're gonna turn to Luke thirteen ten. As we were worshiping, you're a good, good father. There's some of you that don't know God as a good father. You don't know God as anything. You know of God, but you don't know God because you haven't had an encounter with God. And if you've had an encounter for some of you is many, many years ago, and our living God, he's alive and he's well, and he's seated on the throne of mercy, and he is moving, and he will fight on your behalf. And he will meet you in your place this day. So in Jesus' name, I pray that you will open your hearts. This is not about my testimony. This is not about this church. This is all about God's word. And God gave me this word a few months ago. And when Pastor Edwin asked me to, to prepare a word for the women's breakfast, he brought it to my remembrance. So this word is for you. I want you to say this word's for me. Because you got to receive it. Because if you don't receive it, it's not going to change you. And the word of God is alive. Amen. The word of God is Amazing. The word of God does not return void. The word of God sets out, it accomplishes what it sets out to accomplish in your life if you'll receive it into your heart. Knowing that there's no man's agenda, there's no woman's agenda, but the agenda of the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we turn to Luke 13, 10 through 17. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. I'm trying to see if I can make this. If I turn it, it becomes bigger for you. Okay, I guess not. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Just so you know who he was, the Bible is, re is referencing Jesus. Amen? Amen? And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years, say 18, 18. and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. I said, when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. And he said unto her, woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath. The Lord then answered him and said, thou hypocrite, Doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ass, his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath found, say Satan hath found, Satan hath found, lo these 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him, amen? amen? So we have a situation on our hands here, right? We have this woman who's in a synagogue, and the synagogue was really mainly a place for the men. Women were allowed, but it's where you would find men, amen? Mm -hmm. And you have this woman who is in bad shape. She said that she was bent down low. Can you imagine, put your heads down for a second, if you will, if you'll bear with me for this. Now if we stay there, I'm already getting uncomfortable like this. What about you? And it says that she was in that state for 18 years. And some of you have been in such a broken state for so long in your lives. And you, don't have, you may not have a physical deformity like this woman did, but you have a lot of brokenness within you, in your mind, in your body, in your spirit. You put your hope in man and churches and women, and they fail you repeatedly because man and women, I will fail you, but God will never fail you. Woman will fail you, man will fail you, but God will never fail you. And so we, we, Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that you know every woman stayed in this place. I don't want you to see this as a physical deformity. I want you to look at yourself. Look at your state. Look at where you are. Look at where your heart is. Look at what your family situation is. Look at what your financial situation is. Look at where your, where, where your state of your spirit this day. 
All, if not all, not, most of us, if not all of us, are broken in one way or another. And right now, in Jesus' name, I break every wall that you have put up in your lives from hurt, from offense, from disappointment, from pain, from anguish, from abuse, from addiction, from repeatedly being used, for repeatedly being taken advantage of. And in Jesus' name, for the disappointment that the so-called church of God has done to the people. That has caused you, not just the so-called, because the true church of God, sisters, is the remnant church. Hallelujah. It's the church that preaches his word, whether there's one or a hundred. It's the church that worships and praises the King of kings and Lord of lords, no matter what. Rain, snow, whatever it may be. That's the remnant church. So I ask you in Jesus' name that you would have ears to hear that whatever your experiences have been before, and this is not about walking with Christ. This is about God saying to you this afternoon, forget what you know about church. You are the church. And the true church of God will not hurt you because the Holy Spirit is in here. And God has set us apart and he calls us a, a holy people set apart for his purposes. A righteous people. You see, when you really know God, I ministered about this a couple of weeks ago, you are righteous because the Bible says so. But you put that book away because that book, you, you think a hypocrisy, hurt, slander, money, money, give me, give me, build my own kingdom. And God only wants one kingdom built and that's his kingdom. But he wants his kingdom in you. He wants his kingdom in you. He wants you, his word in you. He wants the Holy Spirit if he's departed from you at some point because the Holy Spirit can depart. You can find that in the word. He wants you. It's what this sister said here. He's calling you. He wants an encounter with you. He wants you to know that he'll never ever disappoint you. That he'll never give you lip service and then do something else. That he'll never stab you in the back. That he'll never use you. That he'll never hurt you. That he'll never lie to you. That he'll never take from you and not give back. He's given us everything, our God. Our God is faithful. Our God is good. Our God is trustworthy. And we are nothing like him. And if you are, in Jesus' name, I pray right now that the blindness would go away because we are nothing. She said we are wretches. We are wretches. You see, when you know the sinner that you are, that's when God could use you. Because you know the state of your, your the Christian needs, your flesh. What I want to do, I don't do, said yes, Paul. Yes. And the things I do, I don't want to do. <laughs> How many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen. You know you shouldn't be doing some things, but your flesh is like, but God wouldn't, he doesn't do that. You see, God doesn't, God is awesome. He's holy, he's righteous, and he's on the throne. And he's calling on everyone in this room right now to return to him if you have left, to strengthen your relationship if you have one, to just forget and forgive. So many of you are harboring Holy Spirit unforgiveness for past offenses in churches. And you need to let it go because that's not God. God is saying, they're not my people. Who said they were my people? Sisters, the, the fruit of true Christians is, is, is that they produce fruit, that they're producing fruit, that they're speaking life into you and something's moving, that they're inspiring you through the living word of God, not through fantasies and tales or prophets and magic, that God is good all the time and all the time God is good and his promises are yes and amen for all of us. And so we need to just say, I'm getting man and woman out of my way. Come on now, get them out of your way. You don't even have to say it out loud, but forget it. The Bible says that when we ask for forgiveness, that, that God casts our sin to the depths of the sea, never to be remember, remembered ever again. And God is calling you this day to be free of your past. Be free of unforgiveness. Be free of pain. Be free of suffering. Be free of disappointments. Focus on this. Focus on the cross. Focus on Jesus. Focus on what he's done because God is calling and God is coming soon for his church. All the signs are obvious. But even if he weren't coming, he's so good. You don't want to live this life in hell on earth when you can live it like being in heaven while you're here when you have him. Amen? Amen. The spirit of infirmity. Say spirit of infirmity. Spirit of infirmity. How many of you believe that there's really a spiritual realm? There is. There's two places we end up. Where? Heaven and hell. Is there an in-between? No. no. Am I saying it to scare you? 
No. I, I'm explicit. Mm. When I die, glory to God. Celebrate at my funeral. Because I know I'm going to so much. A better place, Abba. Amen. With our God, with our Father, we're restored. Mm. Last night we had a prayer service and, a, a, and we were worshiping and the Holy Spirit showed me, God showed me that that when he formed us, even before we were born in the natural, that there was this umbilical cord that he attached. Just like mommies, I'm a mother for the mothers, we're attached to our baby and then it gets cut and then they survive outside. And he showed me that that's the same thing with him and us, each and every one of you, that he's connected to you and that some of you have severed, have severed the cord, the connection, but God is in the uh, supernatural, miraculous business, amen? amen? And he wants you to be connected with him once again. He doesn't want to disconnect anymore, amen? amen? And don't let anybody knock that up either for you, amen? That connection, because sometimes we get distracted by everything else and everyone else. Hallelujah. Amen. So a spirit of infirmity, a spirit of infirmity. See, you have to believe that there is a spiritual realm in order to be free of some spiritual bondage that we're in. Some of you, us, are in the spiritual bondage or have been, amen? Spirit of infirmity, physical or mental weakness. Also defined as infirmity as lacking power, disability, bodily disability, frailty, or moral weakness. And the Bible is very clear that spiritual warfare exists. What is spiritual warfare? It's the fight for your soul. It's the fight for your soul. You see, if the enemy can put enough people and enough situations in your life to get you, you're doing it yourself because we are active in this process, whether we press into God or we move back. But the enemy will do everything he can to bring people, to bring situations, to distance you and distance you where you want nothing to do with God. It's because it's for your soul. He, he wants your soul. How many of you know that? Believe that. The devil wants your soul and he can't have it in Jesus name unless you give it to him now Ephesians 6 12 talks about this Hallelujah. is anyone hot or is it just me <laughs> Ephesians 6 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. What does that mean? That means that it's a spiritual fight, okay? And those who serve the enemy will be used by the enemy. You ever have that person that drives you crazy, like, get away from me? Yes. <laughs> Maybe you're the person that you people want, you know? Who knows? We've been in all different shoes at some point in our life, right? Amen. <laughs> The enemy is strategic about who he'll use to take you down. And it could be your spouse, it could be your children, it could be your uh, anyone. The closest people to you, the enemy will influence. Yes, he will. He'll use the weakest person spiritually to influence and pollute you. Amen? Amen. So even though it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, the enemy will use people in our lives to keep us from God. Spirit of infirmity. We're going to break the spirit of infirmity in this place. Amen? Amen. Some of you are like, I don't have a spirit of infirmity. Well, that's a life in the pit of hell. Look at your life. In Jesus' name. And I'm not, a, I'm not the devil, the accuser, but the Holy Spirit is speaking. You see, because the enemy wants us to think we're okay. There's nothing quite wrong. There's nothing that we need to fix. This word is not for me. They must be talking about her over there. But God is speaking to everyone in this room. So search your hearts, examine your hearts as we continue in this word. Amen? Amen. Because I don't know about you, but I'm going to be free this day. Amen. Amen. So Luke 13 talks about the spirit of infirmity. Now, what did this lady have? That's a real diagnosis. Now, I haven't seen this because I'm in pediatrics. So my age cap is 21. How many of you have seen somebody walking down the street yeah. like this? Mm -hmm. And it's called ankylosing spondylitis. There's a baby. There's a baby. It's real. It's a cute little cartoon with Jesus, but it's real and it's not cute when you're the one deformed like that. So this is what happens. On the right side, you see the normal spine. Let me pull this up. And you see the, the, uh, the spine is supposed to have spaces in between and you have your disc in there. And so if you look at a normal spine, you see the little blue, if you can make it out on the side? See that? 
Yeah. That's normal. With this thigh, with this problem, you start to lose the spaces in between the spine. Mm -hmm. So basically your spine falls into itself mm -hmm. and you're in pain, mm -hmm. severe pain, pain that no medication takes away. Mm -hmm. And guess what? There's no cure. Not during biblical times, not today. And some of you have a spirit of infirmity that may not be this physical one. And you may, be, you may feel like there's no hope. There's no way out. You may feel like I've tried this over and over and over again. Nothing is going my way. I'm never, this is never going to change. But I have good news for you. There's a cure and his name is Jesus. Amen. This is what happens at the, at the worst of it. These are x-rays. You don't have to look at them. Look at this. And this is how some of us are spiritually on our face, deformed, barely making it, tripping. How many, can you imagine walking like this? This is what this woman had in Luke 13. Another interesting thing is this usually affects um, men between the ages of 10 and 30. And only 10% of women have this. So this woman is bound with invisible chains. Amen? I think you missed that. She's bound with invisible chains. Invisible. You have invisible chains? Not you, right? Let's be real here. It's your soul that we're talking about. And God wants you free. Because who the sun set free is free indeed. Amen. So I mentioned earlier, what number did I have you repeat? Let's say 18. 18. How many of you have had a problem for 18 years? Some of you aren't 18, I realize that. And some of you are three times that plus. You have a problem for 18 years? Amen. Have you ever gone to the Lord and prayed and fasted and worshiped and done everything you know to do, then gave up and tried again, over and over, told everybody and their mother your story? 18 years this woman was like this. Now, what on earth was she doing in there on the 18 years later? Are you still in church when you have a backache, when you're sick, when you have a cold, when you have ear pain, when your head hurts, when you have your period? Are you still at church? One week, two weeks, three weeks, you're gone. That's how it works. One Sunday, another Sunday, one Bible study, a prayer service, and then you're doomed because the enemy wants to get you alone. So this woman knows something that we need to know. Stay connected. Stay connected to a true body of Christ. Stay connected to people who are the lights that produce fruit, that are living this out instead of just talking about it. When you see them at a restaurant and you know that that is a son or daughter of the Most High God. See, she knew where to be. 18 years has biblical, it's a, you know the numbers in the Bible have a significance. The number 18 is symbolic meaning for bondage. Isn't that interesting? The significance of the number 18 in the Bible comes from its symbolic meaning for bondage. That's a long time to be in bondage. Luke 13, 12 through 13. I read this earlier. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. See, she knew where to find him. Do you know where to find Jesus? And said unto her, woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her. We need Jesus to lay his hands on us today. How many would say amen to that? Amen. Amen. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. See, I want to be immediately made free. What about you? And I will glorify God. See, God honors your patience. This woman was patient. I don't know if I would continue for 18 years, honestly, sisters. You know, you can say, I would. You know, there's people, I'll do it. Really, when you're tested in the, in, in, in the form that in pain and you can't take it anymore, will you? Will you keep coming to the Lord? Will you keep being connected to a body? The Bible says that a fool, a, fo a fool isolates himself, right? That's foolish because you're hurting yourself. You're distancing yourself. And there's just something about coming together with the brethren in unity, not this unity. Amen? Amen. So God honors your patience when you go through something. It may be days. It may be hours. It may be weeks or years. But God honors your patience. He, and not honors, he blesses, excuse me. I mean to say he's blessing, he blesses your patience. When you're patient and you walk in faith, 
God always comes through one way or the other, but it's in his time, not your time. It's when he feels or deems it appropriate because God is always on time. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I had a, I, I've been going through a situation for almost a year at work. And I had a meeting on Thursday and I, I sent out a prayer request. And one of, um, one of the brothers that was part of the group, he wrote back, God is still gonna be on the throne at 1230. See, we can't get caught up in this world because this world will consume us with worry. This world will take us down and convince us that we're defeated and done. But God, you see, I walked out of that meeting at 1226 in the victory because of my God. He's my God and I'm his daughter. Is he your God? God will bless your patience. God will bless your obedience. God will bless you when you can't carry your, you ever feel like you just can't get out of bed for church? Nobody here, right? <laughs> I feel like it sometimes. <laughs> you know, you make every excuse to rain the snow that this is, I just can't, I don't want to. It's okay to be real, that's what we need to be. But we die to this flesh and we say, I'm going. Come hell or high water, I'm going to church because I know I'm going to meet with my God, amen? amen. She activated her faith by going to that synagogue year after year after year. You activated your faith by coming here. God sees her faith, God sees your faith. God saw her and God sees you. He sees you right where you are right now. I don't know what you're going through, but he knows every detail. The Bible says that he knows how many hairs are on your head. It says that your tears are bottled <coughs> in heaven because when you hurt, he cares. When you cry, he's there. When you are just, you can't anymore and it's just coming out and you can't even speak, he knows. Because he is our God and we are his daughters. Do you receive that? God loves her and God loves you. Because we are his daughters just like she was his daughter. Sometimes people view us as broken. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You know when you're going through something and everybody just stops calling you? Or stops visiting you? Or maybe everybody's visiting you with their problems and you're broken. You can't take another second. See, a lot of us have the God complex where we think, come, come, bring me everything. And you don't say it, but you behave in that way. And then you get the very life sucked out of you. It's like a leech. Uh. I aged so much in three years of this ministry. Not because the people in this church are a leech, but because I learned a lot in three years outside of another covering. Do you know what I mean? And so my point is that when you take it from trying to fix people, which is not our job ever, never was, never will be, and you point them to him, and you point them to his word, my goodness, just watch out and watch God. And they may run from you. They may go to somebody else that'll listen. But me and my house will serve the Lord. Amen. And God never asked me to be God. Hallelujah. So God sees your state. People may have said to you, you'll never be healed. Your situation will never change. You are a lost cause. Your children are a lost cause. Your job is a lost cause. Everything's lost. Your finances are a disaster. And they're never going to change. Don't believe that. Believe for healing and deliverance because it will occur. And some of you don't even think you deserve healing. That's right. But you do. He sent Jesus to the cross for that healing. And so this woman has no name in the Bible. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. And some of you are nameless women in this very busy, crazy world where you think no one knows you, no one cares. Everybody will walk over your dead body should you fall and die at your job. Or maybe you feel nameless in your own home. Maybe you feel nameless in your family. Maybe you feel nameless wherever your sphere of influence is, like no one, you know, I don't mean anything. But God knows your name, just like he knew her name. Amen? Amen. Amen. He called her a daughter of Abraham in the, in the word. Do you know that you're daughters of God? Truly, you're daughters of God. You are a daughter of God. God doesn't want one person to perish on this earth. Not one, not one. Hallelujah. This lady did not let time, judgment, pain, others' opinions. You're going to church again? Oh my goodness. People stopped that, I think, like three, four years ago with me. You with your church friends? You know what I said? I said, not with my friends. They're not my church friends. 
I got fed up. At first, I would be like, you know, when you're shy in the beginning? I'm like, no, they're my friends. God has given me, uh, you know, spiritual sisters that are better than any man or woman he could ever give me because they love God. And he uses them. Amen? So she had a divine appointment that day in the synagogue. You have a divine appointment today. Amen. She actively pursued God. She went in her broken state. He blessed her, he healed her, and she glorified God. Amen? Yeah. Because she knew God is God, her healer. Say Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah. Now what happens next, very quickly? I'm not going to read this again. What happens is, Hallelujah. the people in the synagogue, the men were pretty upset. You ever have, um, let me ask you a question. I guess the Holy Spirit is bringing this to remembrance. You ever in a worship service and God is moving and then all of a sudden everything stops? It's like, okay, get to the word now. Or let's do the announcements. And you're saying, but stop. I, I, wait. You ever get to that place when you're worshiping and you're like, no, no, no. I remember I felt like, thank God I can, you know. I can press another song, praise the Lord. Amen. But I, you know, I, I was so desperate because I was feeling God's presence and he was moving in my heart and he was speaking to me and I was releasing and I, and I didn't care who was watching and I was crying and I was being lifted of all the burdens and now it's time to get to the business of the world and that's not the business of God. So sisters, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Be sensitive to when God is moving. Be sensitive if somebody's crying. Don't go and talk, talk, talk in your church or this church. Zip it, lock it, put it in the pocket, man. Yeah, you heard right. We need to be about our father's business all the time. If you're sitting next to someone who's crying, pass, pass this, this sister a tissue. We have to be sensitive. These people were not sensitive. How dare you heal her? Now, women were not valued as much as men back in the old days, much like today. But God valued her. And God said, oh, he included this scripture so that we wouldn't be religious people. Because religion would say, you're wearing red lipstick, you dirty whore. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, I, if I walk like this, they would take a bet and probably run after me in some religious institutions. But God doesn't see the outside. God sees the inside. And God is not a God of religion. God is a God of relationship. And if we can grasp that, if we can get that, then we can get this relationship with our Lord and Savior to a place where it needs to be. And if you don't have one, you can establish one where you know that he doesn't care what you look like on the outside. He cares about your heart. He cares about your soul. He cares about you not living your life like you're miserable and in pain and bitter all the time. He is the light of the world. He came to save you. He came to deliver you. He came to set you free. He came in my life and he took all the shame away of everything bad that I did. And he continues to take my shame away as I continue this walk. Because as I said before, I know my state. There's nothing good in here but God. Yes. He's the one that allows me to speak. He's the one who gives you the strength and me the strength. He's the one that allows me to shut it when I want to just attack, when I'm being attacked. He's the one who says, love them. They're lost. Just like you were lost and now you're found and you were blind. Just love them regardless of what they say or do. Because he cares about where you're going to spend eternity. And he wants you to live your life with him. With him. Not missing anything. Do you all know that we were made with this empty part in us that only God can fill? And we fill it with drugs and alcohol and sex and television and music and clothing and materialism and crap, garbage garbage and we're filling and you never feel full i came to the lord in my 20s drinking going dancing doing whatever i wanted spending like 60 dollars on a bra when that would have been like 500 dollars today you see my point the waste wanting the best of this and the best of that and you ever you ever hear of being house poor yeah you look great but you get to the house and it's like whoo <laughs> pay my mortgage but there's no food <laughs> because we, we want to we want to fill ourselves and this void that God has given us with the things of the world when we're not of the world you see you're not you're daughters of the most high God and God is saying let me fill that space will you let it up and out and let me fill it and you'll never ever ever thirst again you'll never be hungry again because he will fill you 
He will bless you with rivers of living water. That will, oh, Father, that will fill you in such a way that you don't look back. You can look back because it's too good to be with him. You can't turn away because you understand it's not about a pastor or a sister. It's about God. And you feel him moving and you feel him touching. And you can't, I, I, I can't, I'll never do it. People say, oh, I've said that. No, I'm never turning away. His love is too good. My husband can never fill me the way that God fills me. My children, no one. Not anything in this world. But you have to let him, you have to let it out. See, we have all this stuff and it's like we come to church and you're putting him right on top of all the trash. What happens in there? And some of you think you have the Holy Spirit, but yet the Holy Spirit has departed from you. Again, that's in the Bible, look it up. And you need to welcome the Holy Spirit back, but you need to get it all out. I believe that woman had nothing left, nothing left. When you come to the end of yourself, that's when a lot of times people, they have an encounter with God. Hallelujah. Isaiah 52.2 is tied to the scripture in Luke. It says, shake, and I say this to you, sister, than myself, shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. So what are the bands of the neck? Do you know what this is? Yoke. A yoke. And what does the yoke do? It keeps. Sister, go ahead, Georgian. You you ministered on this. It, it keeps the animal together so that they can't move, and generally their head is down, and they can be led to wherever the farmer wants them to go. And they have to be together, yoked together. So if one goes one way, they can't. They have to work together on it, but their heads are usually down and being led. And so this is a metaphor from beasts that have the yoke fastened to their neck. You see it there, that brown thing? Can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. A yoke, as she said, it's a harness that ties the animals together so that their pulling strength is combined. Mm -hmm. So when you're yoked with the world, who do you think is going to win? Because it's you and the world. It's not you and God. Yeah. You see, right. you, you, can't, yeah. you will serve one master or the other. Yeah. So when you're yoked with the things of the world and you think you have God because maybe you go to church and maybe you read this, no, you're not. I, I hate to tell you, but the Holy Spirit has departed from you. God will not share. It's either him or not. You either have him or you don't. He's not going to share. You know, the Bible says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Is it the devil allowed in here? And what happens if I let the devil in here? You think Jesus is going to hang out? The Holy Spirit's going to stay? Why would he? What does darkness have to do with light? Yeah. What does the world have to do with you? What is the world, Christianese? What does everything that is contrary to the word of God have to do with your life? Amen. And why are you entertaining it? And why do you keep revisiting it? Because you like the way it tastes. The pro in the book of Proverbs, it says, we, uh, the, a dog returns to his own vomit. Stop returning to your vomit already once and for all. Aren't you sick of the stench? Aren't you tired? God wants you clean. He wants you pure. He wants you healed. He wants you free. He doesn't, you don't belong. You were bought but, but for, for such a great price, the blood of the lamb. Jesus was sent that so that you don't have to return to that vomit anymore. So that you don't have to get back in. But you like it. You need to die to what, all these worldly desires and let God fill you once and for all. And believe his word for what it says. Yes and amen for your life. Yes and amen for your life. Yes and amen for your health. Yes and amen for your children. Yes and amen for your finances. Yes and amen to you serving him because it's not all about us, right? We like to rattle these scriptures off, but serve the king. Yep. What are you doing to serve the king? I believe that woman was serving, and that's my opinion, but I believe she was serving, mm -hmm. and I believe that she knew him because if she didn't know him, what on earth was she doing there with a bunch of men when she's crippled? What are you doing with your life? Where are you going with your life? How are you spending your time? Are you seeking God? Or are you still hanging with the crowd broken and messed up? Return to the Father. This woman, she knew God. 
Go ahead, sis. Can somebody help her, uh, get the papers from Corinne? She's going to give you something. God wants you to know him. Amen? God is calling you. God is tugging on your hearts. I am not accusing or condemning you. The Holy Spirit is, God is calling. God is calling for his daughters. God is calling. Hallelujah. God is good. God is calling. Do you know that broken things can become blessed things if you let God do the mending? I said broken things can become blessed things if you let God do the mending. Not man, not woman, but let God mend you this day. <coughs> this woman knew God. If I ask most of you, if not all of us, including myself, do you know God is all those things? Do you? We need to. We need to know our daddy. You can't sing, you're a good, good father, if you don't know him. It's who you are. It's who you are. La, 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 la. Ah. When are they going to be done with this song already? Well, you know, those of us who know him, oh my, I'll sing it for three hours. It's who you are. Because I'm loved by him. It's who I am. And God wants you to know that he's, he loves you. That he's calling you. That he's calling on his remnant true church today to know him like this woman knew him. Adonai. Let's say it together. Adonai. That means Lord Master. Do you know God as Master? El Elohim. El Elion. <laughs> the Most High God. El Olam. The Everlasting God. El Roy. The, the Strong One Who Sees. El Shaddai. Lord God Almighty, Elohim, God of power and might, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide, Jehovah Mikodeshim, the Lord who sanctifies you, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner victory, Jehovah Ra, the Lord my shepherd, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals, Jehovah Sabah, the Lord of hosts, Jehovah Shalom, Shalom. The Lord is peace. Yes. Jehovah Shama, the Lord is their presence. Jehovah Sidiknu, excuse me if I said that wrong, the Lord our righteousness. Yahweh, Lord Jehovah. Anna, jealous God. God wants you to know that he is your father, that he is your friend, that he is the lover of your soul, that he is your deliverer, that he is your fortress, that he is your strong tower, that he is your provider, that he is your healer, that he is your defender, that God fights for you, that God will heal you, that God wants to heal you, that God's just waiting for you to come, come, come to the altar and come before him and let him be God in your life once and for all. He's not a genie. I'm not listening to this so he can fix your whole life. God says you need to do your part. You need to seek me. You need to pray. You need to worship. You need to come in one accord with the brethren. You need to read your word. God is dying to speak to some of you in his word. If you'll just open it up. Oh, come to the altar. That song, the father's arms are open wide. She came to that place. And if you remember in the word, it says that he called her. Did he go over to her and lay hands? What did it take? An act, activity, active. It's not passive. This relationship is not passive because it's relationship, not religion. It's not pastors preaching the word of God, people praying for you. And all. No, no, you have to have a relationship with God. Because when you have a relationship with God, you know like you know like you know that he's real, that he's alive, that he's on the throne, that he fights for you, that he moves on your behalf, that he will move the mountain. God is God. He's the great I am, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So I bring you today a word of encouragement. That God is still calling. God hasn't gone to, God has, he hasn't departed from us yet. And that there's still time now to seek him. But you have to do your part, sisters. You don't have to be in the state that you are anymore. Such a spirit of discouragement, I feel. Disappointment and regrets. God takes all of that away. 
and he makes something beautiful like the sister said a fresh robe hallelujah I'm finishing up Malachi 3 6 for I am the Lord I change not God does not change do you change we all do right but God he doesn't change he's faithful Jeremiah 30 17 those who have ears let them hear in Jesus name these scriptures for I will restore health unto thee and I will heal thee of thy wounds saith the Lord because they called thee an outcast saying this is Zion whom no man seeketh after the world rejects you God accepts you the world judges you God says, oh that's my daughter Hallelujah. that's my righteous daughter and the Lord is saying, Isaiah 41, 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I will help thee. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. It's his righteousness. Psalm 107, 19 through 20. I love your word, God. I bless your holy name. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. Did you hear me? We've got to cry out to the Lord in our trouble. He wants to hear your voice. He knows, he sees, but he wants to hear you. Then they cry out unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and, and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Matthew 7, 7, 11. And this is the active process. We have not the word of God says, my people have not because they, because they ask not. <laughs> ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If, if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your father which is in heaven hallelujah. give good things to them that ask hallelujah, hallelujah. Psalm 138 8. the Lord says today the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me hallelujah. thy mercy O Lord endureth forever forsake not the works of thine own hands you see, the word of God has to, has to become alive for you. You have to receive it for yourself. The sisters in this church will tell you, I'm God's favorite. <laughs> I walk in that, I own that. I'm his favorite one. You feel the same that. way, but I'm, I'm, that's what I'm talking about. I am God's favorite one, and I always will be. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> but the word has to come alive where it's like, oh, no, no I'm his favorite one. <laughs> Can we say that together? The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me and point to yourself and believe it. One, two, three. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Now let's do The Lord will perfect that which concerneth my family. Let's say that and believe it. My family. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth my walk with him. See, the Lord will perfect that which needs perfecting in your life, which is everything. How many of you agree with that? Yes. Hallelujah. So I pray. I'm going to play a song. And I just want you to search your hearts. That's the end of the message. Our God is alive. Our God is good. Our God is amazing. Our God is on the throne. Our God is alive. Our God will fight on your behalf. Our God will move mountains for you.